Hello and welcome to this weekend's technical analysis video. My name is Derek and we'll take a look at silver on the multiple time frames, gold, as well as the Dow Jones to gold and Dow Jones to silver ratio. Charts going back to 1968 and 1999. Okay, so let's get this started. Take a look at silver first on the 8-hour chart. Obviously a declining move today and really for the uh, whole week. As uh, the symmetrical triangle that was uh, being talked about did break, of course, to the downside. And when we look at this on the uh, daily chart. We can uh, just take a quick little look at the triangle itself. And it would be roughly somewhere like this. And there we can see a clear break to the downside. So when I was stating for the last couple of weeks that a big move was brewing, well, at least that is now going to take place now down to this previous uh, band of resistance and support from the end of 2012 and at the, uh, the low, t low, low 30s, high 29s. Moving this on to the weekly chart, of course, I've talked a lot about these highs and these lows. You have a situation where you're making lower highs, lower lows, and then you have a matching low, technically, a higher high but then after the fact you can say it was a matching high matching low matching high so it can still make that higher low either here or somewhere down below there but it's looking more and more as if it's uh, probably going to have another test of the uh, 26 ish level obviously it's still going to break down below this support but and it can still find the higher low and run the 28 area now, generally speaking, I've been talking a lot about those failed moves that can occur, which is normal within these range-bound markets. Generally speaking, the easiest way to play the range is to go long when it's at the bottom and to go get out or maybe short when you're at the top end of the range. And, of course, right now it's in the middle. Now, that can work, of course, every time until the last because if you can say here, okay, we're at the bottom of the range, let's buy, and next thing you know, boom, plump, down she goes and you could have got a better uh, buying opportunity. And then the same thing, you go up on here, okay, I'm gonna sell here, and then boom, it just goes higher. Basically what I'm trying to say is when the range is taken out at some point, it's been a long range so far, and it, continue to be, it can continue to be so, it's gonna have the volatile breakout or break down most of the time, but again, still in the middle part of this consolidation range right now. Switching this up to the uh, quarterly term time frame, and I've talked about this quite so uh, often. We're looking at Fibonacci from this low to this high, having support right now at the uh, 23.6. So it says 76.4 on the left-hand side, but this is from here to here is 76.4%, which means the difference from there to there is the remainder of 23.6. So it's found some support there on multiple occasions. That big level I was talking about, which is around the low 26s. If this area is taken at this next significant area, area is in the low 20s and high 18 and all of the 19 level as the uh, next support area. If, of course, that happens, would that break the trend? Well, did it break the trend down here? I'll be saying for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, that a break down below here is going to be giving obviously great buying opportunities it probably will take longer of course to break that 50 barrier how long that will take i have no idea okay so that's the uh, silver analysis but before we finish off with silver i want to talk about this indicator that i made this last week it basically goes through 12 different moving averages and sees a deviate within them or the changes over how that moving average was one quarter of the periods ago it's tough to understand but generally speaking what it means is if it's in a negative situation, that means you can say it's oversold or great buying opportunities as long as it's uh, going to be in a bull market, which I think is the case with silver. And therefore, it's at around negative and a, a negative a half, so it could still go down a little bit more, but obviously when it's low like this, it's a good buying opportunity. Let's move this on now to a gold, which unlike silver... It uh, did not stay above its uh, previous uh, low. It's made a new low today, obviously. And it did barely break below 1600 down to 1597. Obviously, this is in a bear market. If we take a look at this on the weekly time frame to get a little bit better of an indication, 
And we have this major range, just like silver, let's just draw the highs and the lows in. You have a top that's been hit three times consecutively and a low that's been hit three times consecutively. The low is about 1525, the high is about 19, uh, well the high for this range is about 1800. Okay. So within this range, we can see that uh, it's been unable to get by this uh, significant Fib level on three tests. The more often you test it, the more likely it is you take it out. It hasn't taken it out. Same thing, of course, down to support. And uh, this level here of uh, 1665, which has been support, that area is now a resistance area. And the test level would be down towards this uh, lower end range, of course, if it does go there. If I see here with the red candle, let's just assume that next week we have a green candle that brings it up to 1660, and it would be like a reversal type of a candle. If the week after that confirmed with the move back up over 1700, then that would be saying, hey, it looks like a failed breakdown, and maybe that's where buyers are in control, and maybe that would be the case. Basically, what I'm trying to say within that is to adjust to the message of the market as things will consistently consistently be changing. Now let's do some ratios. Uh, let's do the uh, Dow Jones to the, uh, the gold ratio. If you've heard Peter Schiff talk, he's talked about this uh, having a retest of its 1980 uh, lows of one. You take the uh, price of the Dow Jones, which currently is around 14000 and you divide it by the uh, price, in this case gold, of course that's around 1600 and Very volatile to say the least, but uh, clear downtrend, clear uptrend, clear downtrend again. Let's take a look now at the silver one and uh, same time frame for silver. You go from a low of 17 and a half all the way up to 2587 and now back down to 469. To say that's volatile would be an understatement. In fact, in 1980, when it hit this low of 17.54, that was pretty much the same as the gold to silver ratio. After all, the ratio for gold and the Dow was 1 to 1. But the gold to silver ratio never got much higher than 100, yet this one got past 2500. The reason why was because from 1980 to about 2000, silver lost about 90% uh, of its uh, paper or its uh, digital price, the price that people know the price of silver as. And the price of stocks went up about 900% from about 1000 to 10000 So that's the big reason for that to be the well, why it's playing out as we see that. Okay, other ways of looking at this. Well, the Dow's at 14000 today. Well, back in 2007, when the Dow was 14000 silver was like $15. Okay. And then you look back in here, well, when silver was 50 that means, what was the Dow back then, like eleven or 12000 So the Dow's went up and silver's went lower. Well, that's basically the way it's, it's been. But again, just like gold, clear downtrend, clear uptrend, clear downtrend. Nothing has been done yet to really shake this market out as far as changing the reversals, but what we'll do is adjust the time frame from this high to where we are now. And we'll start off with the silver and then finish it off with the gold on that time frame, and the video will be done. Okay, so there's the high and there's the low. Notice this pattern in here. You go up to this high, pull back. Go up to this high, pull back, and it's back higher again. I call this in my book a double bottom. A double bottom is where you, and you can even make this never cup and handle either way, same formation, is where you go down like that and then you do it again, matching up, matching up with the previous highs. If we take a look at a projected uh, uh, location for where it would go to, I would say roughly around here. Now let's look at what may happen if it were to go up to the significant Fib level. That level is uh, 609 and change. So let's assume that uh, it is 609 and they bring the price of silver, <coughs> excuse me, down to 19. That means the price of the Dow would be about 11,500. Now the fiscal cliff is, or not the fiscal cliff, that's old news. 
The debt ceiling is uh, coming into play pretty much any time now. And there's a decent chance or a high probability chance that there's a significant retracement in stocks. 14,000 down to 11.5 would be a loss of about 2,500 or that of a little over 20 or almost 20%. That's enough to get people nervous, rattled, and shaken. And if silver goes through a same decline at the same period, then it would just make, like, make it likely that the 26 level would break with the fast move spanning probably one to two weeks, taking it down to 18, thus making it towards this level. And here, if that's the case, there'd be nothing to change the trend below this uh, running average from this high. And uh, for this to reverse trends, it's the same thing for I'm going to say all the time. It's create a significant breakout come back, find support within this band, and then break whichever resistance you establish. A long ways away from doing that. Final chart will be the gold to silver, or excuse me, the, I'll do the gold to silver ratio probably next weekend, but for now, this will be the Dow Jones to uh, gold for the same period of time I just showed. Same sort of uh, deal within this moving average. It's had a break. Yeah, it doesn't mean too much yet. Establish resistance come back to this average, then break resistance to make it a uh, reversal of trend, but there's nothing to show that it's uh, going to reverse its trend. Of course, right now, in a downtrend, I would expect it to stay in such. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.